Okay, welcome to lesson six. Um, this is the last lesson in our first unit, and it's going to be a special grammar feature. Um, for the first three units, we're going to have a special grammar feature at the end of each unit. And this is one of the more important ones. You might want to check this several times, and it does move pretty quickly, so you might need to watch it a couple of times. But in this grammar lesson, we're going to be talking about sentences. So there's five objectives for this lesson. The first one is understand the four major types of sentences. Simple, compound, complex, and compound, complex sentences. Understand and be able to repair sentence fragments. One of the most egregious sentence errors that there is. Understand and be able to correct run-on sentences. Understand and be able to correct, correct comma splices. Finally, after this uh, lesson, I want you to do a reading. I guess this will be your first reading. Um, so hopefully you have that hacker book, the one with the white cover, a writer's reference by now. It's basically just a, um, a reference tool, and it's split up into several different sections. You can flip on the tabs and see different letters. There's one section B, one section G, one section is um, A. Um, so I want you to read these three sections that kind of correspond to the lessons that I'm going to be talking about in here. The first one is section B4 in the Hacker Book, and that one covers sentence types. The second section is G5, and that covers sentence fragments. And the third section is G6, run-on sentences. I think it's a really nice companion set of readings to go along with this lesson. But let's jump into it. We're going to have to go way back, right? Um, you might not like to hear it, but we're going to have to go back, back, back to the basics. Really, really far back. How far back? Pretty far back. Maybe not that far back. But we do have to go back to the beginning of sentences. Um, all sentences need two things. Maybe you remember this from elementary school. A subject plus a verb. If it's going to be a complete sentence, you have to have a subject, which is a doer of the action, and a verb, which is an action. If you're not, if you don't have these uh, parts, then you don't have a sentence. The most basic sentence you could have is something like this: "I go." Here we have a subject, I, and a verb, go. That's actually not the most basic sentence we have. There's, there's an even more basic sentence than that: just "go." Period. Go is the verb. Um, the subject here is implied. Since it's a command, the subject is actually you. You go. But uh, when we're giving commands, we don't have to use you, so we can just say go. So this is about the simplest sentence I can imagine. Just one word, go. Um, so the simple sentence is the building block of all sentences. A simple sentence is basically one subject and at least one verb. Take a look at a couple of examples. Very basic, simple sentence, I go. Right? We have the subject and we have a verb. Joe spent the other day fishing down by the river. Subject of the sentence, Joe, verb, spent the other day fishing down by the river. Since it has Joe spent, we have a complete sentence, although I didn't put the period here. You need to end your sentences with the period. Can you get me some milk? Subject of the sentence, you. Verb, get. Even though it's a question, still a complete sentence. It has a subject and a verb. Here's another simple sentence. Sally came to me and asked me if I would go with her, uh, go to her wedding. So here, the subject again is Sally. Um, oh, sorry, Sally's the subject. Came is the verb. Came to me and asked me if I would go to her wedding. So in this case, we have two verbs, one subject. So Sally came and asked. Um, that could happen sometimes. But as long as there's one subject, you're still simple sentence, even though there's two verbs. Flying over the city at night is entrancing. Here's another simple sentence. What's the subject? Hmm. You might, does it, could it be flying? Well, flying is a verb, isn't it? Flying looks like a verb, but anytime you put an ing on a verb, you turn it into a noun. So flying over the city is the subject of this sentence. That's a thing. 
flying over the city, or sorry, flying over the city at night, that's the thing, is, is the verb, entrancing. Um, this is called a gerund. Um, so we're going to come back to gerunds, and you're going to see them again in a little bit. Um, but you want to be really careful with your ing verbs, because they're not verbs anymore. They're nouns, and it changes the entire structure of the sentence. Um, the compound sentence is the second type of sentence. A compound sentence is basically two simple sentences connected by either a semicolon, it's kind of confusing the way I put it, the semicolon, or a comma and a conjunction, such as comma and and. So there are seven coordinating conjunctions, right? So there's, and you remember them by the acronym FANBOYS. So the seven coordinating conjunctions are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. So these are appropriate to use with a comma in order to connect two simple sentences into one compound sentence. Alternatively, you could use the semicolon. So you have one simple sentence, semicolon, another simple sentence. Basically, the semicolon takes the place of the period. Um, you're connecting two sentences, but you're not saying how those two sentences are related or connected. When you use a coordinating conjunction with a comma, you're telling the reader, I'm moving on to a new sentence. And you're also telling the reader the relationship of the two sentences. You know, and is a connecting word. So somebody says this, comma, and somebody says this. Um, we've, uh, we're connecting. But is a sort of opposing idea. Those are probably the two most common. Um, you know, so is like as a result. Um, those are actually the three most common that you'll see. Um, although these are the seven that you can use. So the compound sentence, subject plus a verb, and then you need either a semicolon or a comma and a conjunction, a subject plus a verb. It's a little abstract, but let's take a quick look at, it, at some examples of compound sentences so we can see how they're basically two simple sentences. One simple sentence here, comma and a conjunction, one simple sentence here. Um, all the compound sentence is is just the connection of the two simple sentences. I wanted to go, but Bill wanted to stay. Here's a compound sentence. Subject of the first, uh, first part is I. I wanted to go. We have a comma and a conjunction, comma, but Bill wanted to stay. So you have a subject and a verb, comma, conjunction, subject and a verb. Um, so here's a good example of a pretty simple, straightforward compound sentence. Here's another one. Sometimes I feel happy, comma, and other times I feel sad. So the subject of the first Part of the sentence is I, sometimes I feel happy, and we have the comma and the conjunction again, other times I feel sad. Um, so we have two different uh, subjects and two different verbs. If we did this, sometimes I feel happy. and other times sad, here we would only have one subject, I feel happy and other times sad. Since we put the I back in here with feel back in here, now it's a compound sentence. Here's another one. Susan does not like kale, comma, yet she loves broccoli. Um, so here we have Susan does not um, like kale, and then we have a comma and a conjunction, yet, comma, yet, she loves broccoli. Here's one with a semicolon. Go to the mountains, the air is so fresh. So what's the subject of this phrase? The verb is go. The subject is, like I mentioned before, you, since this is a directive, it's a command. You go to the mountains, semicolon. The air is fresh, so fresh. Um, so here again we have a, a compound sentence, two complete ideas connected by the semicolon. 
Um, notice how the semicolon is very non-directional. It doesn't sort of tell us the relationship between the two. It just sort of says these two are similar or related. I'm putting them in the same sentence together. Basically takes the place of the period. That's a good way to think of the semicolon. And here's uh, another one. There are many ways to make sentences, semicolon. The trick is understanding subjects and verbs. Um, really good thought here, and also a compound sentence. There are many ways to make sentences. The trick is understanding subjects and verbs. And here's the semicolon. This is a better use of the semicolon, I think. Oh, this one's pretty good, too. Um, these two ideas are very closely related. There are many ways to make sentences. The trick is understanding subjects and verbs. It's almost like a continuation of the thought. That's a good use for a semicolon. Um, so that's the idea of the compound sentence. Two simple sentences connected by a semicolon or a comma and a um, coordinating conjunction, such as any of the fanboys' conjunctions, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Um, so hopefully you got that one. Let's take a look at the next type of sentence, the complex sentence. Sounds very complicated. Um, it's actually not too complicated. The complex sentence contains one simple sentence and a subordinating clause uh, created with a subordinating conjunction, such as because. There are many different types of subordinating conjunctions, and these are the words you use to make complex sentences. In the same way you use coordinating conjunctions to make compound sex, uh, sentences, such as any of the fanboys ones, you use subordinating conjunctions to make complex sentences. There are many subordinating conjunctions, but the most common ones are after, although, as, because, before, even though, which isn't a word, it's actually a phrase, if, since, unless, when, and while. When you use a word like this, you make something subordinate. So, for instance, if, if we said, if the cat jumps off the, the chair, that's not a complete sentence, although the cat jumps off the chair is a complete sentence. When we put the word if in it, it makes it dependent on something else, so it makes it a subordinating phrase. So all of these conjunctions make phrases subordinate. So here's the graphic, a subject plus a verb uh, plus a subordinating phrase. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of some complex sentences. Here's one. Because I was very tired, I decided to go home. What's the subject of this sentence? There's only one subject, right? It's I, right here. I, sorry, I decided to go home. This right here is a complete simple sentence. You could just say, I decided to go home, period, and that's a sentence. Um, this right here, because I was very tired, is not a complete sentence, although I was very tired is a complete sentence. Right? Since we put the word because in here, it makes it subordinate on something else. Because I was very tired, and you have to finish the thought, I decided to go home. So that's the complex sentence. It has this, a subordinating phrase, and a complete thought, or a complete simple sentence. Because I was very tired, comma, I decided to go home. Here's another one. If Joe comes to my house, I will greet him warmly. Same thing. The subject right here is I, and then will greet is the verb. Um, so here's your complete simple sentence, and here's a subordinating one that uses the subordinating word if. If Joe comes to my house. Um, so whenever you start a phrase with if or because or any of these words, before or since or unless, um, you're in the complex sentence structure. So you want to make sure you finish the idea. Um, so this is actually really tricky. When you start a sentence with a subordinating conjunction, you have to know that you're in a complex sentence and that you're going to finish it later. Um, some some are kind of more intuitive, like like if. Most people sort of feel, if I start a sentence with if, I'm going to have to have a then. If Joe comes to my house, then I will greet him. Um, some of the others are a little bit trickier, like before, you know. Um, before Joe comes to my house, he will need to go to the grocery store or something like that. Um, so you might not sort of recognize that as a subordinating uh, phrase, but um, 
but it is. But let's take a look at some uh, of the inverse examples. So these are ones where you start a sentence with a subordinating phrase and end with a complete thought. Here's the reverse. I will park the car before I get out. Um, subject of the sentence, I, verb, will park the car before I get out. Um, so this would be a complete thought, I get out, but since we use the subordinating word before, it turns it into a subordinate phrase. So I'll park the car before I get out. Um, one thing to notice about this is that there's um, no comma in this sentence, but there is a comma in this sentence. So the rule is, if you start a sentence with a subordinating phrase, you have a comma at the end of the subordinating phrase, and then you have your complete idea. If you start a, a complex sentence with a um, complete idea, and then end with a subordinating phrase, no comma. Right? Um, this rule can be really helpful with since or because. A lot of times when people put because in the middle of a sentence, they, um, they tend to put a comma for the because. It makes sense that Roger likes baseball, comma, since he's a big sports fan. But you wouldn't actually put this comma here, because this is just, because um, this right here is the subordinating phrase. Since he's a big sports fan, it makes sense that Roger likes baseball since he's a big sports fan. Or we could replace this with because. It makes sense that Roger likes baseball because he is a big sports fan, and we wouldn't put a comma before the because. Um, so again, here, subject, it, verb, makes sense that Roger likes baseball. Subordinating word, since he's a big sports fan. He is a big sports fan would be a complete idea, but since we have the subordinating word since, it turns it into a subordinate idea. Um, so that's the idea of the complex sentence. Oh briefly one other thing. A lot of times complex sentences are reversible, right? So we could choose to flip the sentence in most cases. Um, I decided to go home because I was very tired, right? I will greet him warmly if Joe comes to my house. Before I get out, I will park the car. Um, since he's a big sports fan, it makes sense that Roger likes baseball. This last one sounds a little bit clunky, but typically you can sort of flip those back and forth. So that's really cool. If you know that rule about complex sentences and how the subordinate phrases work, you have a lot of control about how you can enter and begin sentences um, and, and how you can connect sentences too. Um, so there's the complex. Now let's take a look at the most complex of all, the compound complex sentence. Um, the longest and most complicated sentence, the compound complex, as the name implies, includes two simple sentences connected with a semicolon. So it includes two simple sentences connected with a semicolon or a comma and a conjunction plus a subordinate phrase. Now we're getting into sort of crazy territory. Um, this one is not actually used all that, that much, but I am going to show you a couple of examples. It gives you some, some leeway because this is, you can jam the most into a sentence when you use this type of sentence. Um, this sentence right here, notice how it's very, very long. It's actually a simple sentence, though. It's not a compound complex sentence. The longest and most complicated sentence, the, compounds, uh, the compound complex, this is actually the subject, as the name implies, includes two simple sentences connected with a comma and a conjunction. So here's our uh, verb. So this particular sentence here is a simple sentence, even though it's very long. It only has one subject and one verb. Um, but that's a little bit beside the point. Let's get to the compound complex sentence and see. Subject plus a verb, and then you need a comma and a conjunction, or, or, or a semicolon, and then a subject and a verb, and a subordinate phrase. And it can kind of go in, in any order you choose. But let's take a look at some, some pretty simple ones. I went to the store but Margaret stayed home and she was feeling ill. This one follows the exact structure I sort of laid out right here. Here's the subject, I went to the store, but Margaret, uh, but Margaret stayed home since she was feeling ill, and here's her subordinate phrase. Um, so that, that's a pretty good example there. Let's take a look at one more. 
starts with the subordinate phrase, because I can always identify my subjects and verbs, that's the subordinate phrase, since it has the word because, and here's the rest of the complex sentence, I can control a longer sentence like the compound complex sentence, here's the semicolon, moving into my last complete idea. Uh, that gives me a lot of variety. Um, so there's a nice sentence right there, and it makes a lot of sense too, because I can identify my subjects and verbs. I can control a longer sentence, like a compound sentence, uh, that gives compound complex sentence, I forgot to put complex in there, that gives me lots of variety. Um, so th there's a good example of, of the types. So there are the four types uh, of sentences right there. So let's get into the three errors that I mentioned at the beginning. They all relate to um, not using sentences uh, correctly or making errors in sentences. So when a sentence lacks either a subject or a verb, so you don't, you don't have the basic requirements of a sentence, you have a fragment. Um, some fragments are really obvious, like over on the table. That's clearly not a sentence. Right? Uh, that's basically, that could be a subject. Over on the table is a glass of milk. Right? Um, but there's no verb in here. Ran a strong race. Uh, so here's the verb. So in this case we have the subject. In this case we have a verb. Ran a strong race, but we don't have a subject. The runner ran a strong race would make this a complete sentence. So those ones are kind of obvious because they sound a little bit clunky. But some of the other fragments can be a little bit harder to spot. Um, so a lot of times people make fragments when they use a subordinating word like those because or since or if words without finishing the complex sentence. Here's a good example. Because some sentences can be very long and many writers think that when a sentence gets long it is hard. Sounds a little funny, huh? It's not a complete sentence even though it is long. Um, you need a verb here. This is actually just a subject or this is just a subordinating uh, phrase. Because some sentences can be very long, and many writers think that when a sentence gets long it is hard, um, writers often make fragments. Here's a good example. Um, that, that would continue the idea to make that a complex sentence. Um, here's another one. This sort of happens. It's the same kind of thing. It's when you use a subordinating word but you accidentally use a period instead of a comma. I was very worried, period, until I heard from her yesterday. So this right here is a fragment, until I heard from her yesterday, because it can't stand alone. It's a subordinating phrase, but it's not connected. The simple solution here would just be, take the period out. I was very worried until I heard from her yesterday. And that would be a complete sentence. Another way is with um, using gerund. Remember we talked about those ing words. Um, since some people might think they're verbs when in fact they're actually nouns, you might make it, um, you might assume that you have a verb. Skiing in the Rockies in all of the fresh powder. So you might say, what's the subject? Mm, actually, this whole phrase is the subject. What's the verb? You might think there is a verb in here, skiing, because ski is a verb. But um, since we have the ing, it's actually a noun, and this is a thing. Skiing in the Rockies and all of the fresh powder is fun. Right? That could be a complete sentence, but we need a verb here. So since we used the gerund, um, we assumed that there was a subject here, but in fact there wasn't. So let's take a look at some run-ons real quick. So the run-on sentence is not a very, very, very long sentence. That's what a lot of people think of when they think of run-songs, run-ons. But actually, a run-on sentence is a very particular kind of error. It's a compound sentence that lacks a comma and a conjunction. Remember, that's the rule. You need a comma and a conjunction or a semicolon. If you don't have those things, you have a run-on. Todd wanted to get me some milk, but I said no. Look at how confusing that is. Todd wanted to get me some milk, comma, but I said no. The young girl got into a car accident, and she just left the scene. That one's missing a comma, too. Here's another one. There is not much you can do. I would just go home. So you can hear it right here. In this case, we don't even have a coordinated conjunction. So we need to either put the semicolon in. There's not much you can do. Semicolon, I would just go home. Or comma and so. There is not much you can do. Comma, so I would just go home. 
Um, so you need to have that. If you don't have it, you have a run-on. And you can tell from these examples, run-ons are very confusing for readers who expect that the writer is telling them where they're starting their new ideas. The police officer had a suspicion, but it was not correct. So here again, we need the comma so that the reader knows the police officer had a suspicion, comma, uh, it was not correct. So there you have the run-on. So that's just forgetting to put your commas in. The other comma, uh, the other sentence error that you can have uh, is a comma splice, which is kind of the opposite. It's very similar to a run-on, but it's a little bit different. It's an error with a compound sentence as well. It's when a, a, a comma splice occurs when a user, a writer uses a comma without a conjunction to connect two simple sentences. So basically, if you use the comma in place of a semicolon to connect two compound sentences, you have, or sorry, two simple sentences, you have the comma splice. I wanted her to get pancakes, comma, she just forgot. So here uh, we have two complete thoughts. I wanted, she forgot. Um, but instead of a semicolon, we just put the comma in, and we didn't use a conjunction like and. Um, so that's a little confusing too, because the reader doesn't know you're necessarily moving into a new thought if you don't have the conjunction or the semicolon. Here's another one. The boys were so excited they ran off in a hurry. Here again, they're just inserting the comma instead of using the semicolon, right? So basically the easy way to fix this one is just turn it into a semicolon or add a conjunction, and. The boys were so excited, comma, and they ran off. Don't forget to get an anniversary gift, otherwise your spouse will be upset. So here again, the subject here is you. Um, you uh, do not forget to get an anniversary gift semicolon, otherwise your spouse will be upset. Um, so here again, we just had a comma in place of a semicolon or a comma in a conjunction. So there's the comma splices, and that's the, uh, the run-ons. Those are ones that you really want to try to avoid. Um, why is it so important that you know how to use your sentences well? So you can control them. You can have complete control over the way your sentences go if you understand how the different sentence types works work and how the different sentence errors happen. Um, so let's take a look at one example of um, some clauses in some different ways. Todd and Joe went fishing, period, I stayed home. So here we have two simple sentences. Todd and Joe went fishing, period, I stayed home, period. That's one way we could connect this. We could also say Todd and Joe went fishing, semicolon, I stayed home, right? And make it instead of two simple. In this case, we could make it a a compound sentence. Todd and Joe went fishing, semicolon, I stayed home. It just gives us a way to connect those ideas. Maybe we don't want to have a short little sentence here because lots of short sentences sound choppy. So we have uh, two ideas connected into one sentence. Or we could use the comma in the conjunction. Todd and Joe went fishing, comma, but I stayed home. So this is also a compound sentence, but um, it gives it a little bit more direction when we use the uh, coordinating conjunction, but it tells us about the relationship between the two ideas. Todd and Joe went fishing, comma, but I stayed home. Um, we could turn it into a, a complex sentence. Todd and Joe went fishing, even though I stayed home. So we use this subordinating conjunction to turn it into a complex. Todd and Joe went fishing, even though I stayed home. Or we could flip it. Even though I stayed home, Todd and Joe went fishing. Right? Just like we talked about, these are both complex. Um, so notice all of the ways, all the different varieties we have. Or we could use our compound complex sentence. Even though I stayed home, Todd and Joe went fishing, and they caught three bass. Um, so there's a nice example here. Um, this is as much as you can jam into a sentence. Here's your subordinate idea, even though I stayed home. Here's one complete thought. Todd and Joe went fishing, comma, conjunction, and, comma, and they caught three bass. Um, so there's the last uh, complete thought. They caught um, so that's the reason that you really want to understand your sentence as well and understand how to avoid the errors. So you have a lot of tools, a lot of ways of connecting and combining sentences, and it gives you a lot more um, ability to control your style. Um, so I think here we're, we're sort of at the end, so here's a wrap-up. So you want to make sure you always know where your subjects and verbs are at all times, right? This is imperative. Um, so a lot of people always ask me, do you always know where your subjects and verbs are? And I say yes. 
in every single sentence that I write, I know what's my subject and what's my verb. Anytime I read back through my writing, uh, I have a sort of subconscious thought of where's my subject and where's my verb. I'm looking for them all the time. Um, it's a little bit more intuitive since I've done it for so long, but um, you want to, you know, deliberately be on the lookout for what are your subjects and what are your verbs in your sentences so that you can get that variety and control your sentences well. Um, so make sure you utilize the four types, simple, compound, complex, and compound, complex. Um, also, uh, when you understand your sentences, it keeps you from committing those sentence errors, fragment, uh, comma splice, and run on that a lot of people make and that can really confuse readers. Um, so for more on this, I want you to take a look at the Hacker book. There's a, in the, the White, A Writer's Reference by Diana Hacker. Make sure you read sections B4, uh, sentence types, right? So that basically reiterates the four types. Section G5, sentence fragments. It gives some, some good examples of sentence fragments. And section G6, run-on sentences. And it also talks about comma splices in there too. Um, so take a look at those just to sort of um, augment what we've talked about in this particular lesson. And I think between those two, you can be your own grammar police to serve and correct. Um, have fun, and I'll see you in Unit 2. Bye for now.